They're so sweet to her and to me. I mean, look at my fucking. I saw night. that. I saw that. That's from last night. That's from last night. Because when what? I get home, they go, "We want to hurt you and torture you." And I'm like, "Why do they do that to you?" Because I think that's like the I'm the guy they can do that with. Do you so, think it's because you're dead inside and they're trying to get emotion out of maybe. you? Maybe. Hundred percent. I'm not as great as Danny. I am. I'm too selfish. What do you mean? Danny is a. F- this is an ice soy latte. Yeah. He texted me this morning. He said, hey, I'm getting co- Tom a coffee. Would you like a coffee? And I didn't reply. I just went, eh. And I thought in my head, if he is as good as I think he is, mm-hmm. he'll get me a coffee. Yeah. And he'll get me one of two things. He'll either get me exactly what Tom get or he'll get me an ice soy latte. Mm-hmm. And when he said an ice soy latte, I thought, you can't, you can't teach that. No. That's fucking... You know what that is? That's someone that cares more about other people than they do about themselves. That's why I'll never do that. I don't, he's even, very, yeah. I don't even know if he likes coffee. He's very unlike you. He's yeah. very unlike you. I he, couldn't even tell you what your order is, and I've watched you order it. I know. You're very self-absorbed. And, yeah. Uh, and but that's not bad. Well, <laughs> subjective. Who's uh, more self-absorbed? Out of all the people you know, who's the most self Am I the most self-absorbed yes, person well, you've yeah. ever met? <laughs> yeah. Why am I self-absorbed? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We could talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. You just you wait to talk. <laughs> like when you listen, you're like Anyway. <laughs> I look at conversations yeah. like double dutch. I go, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm gonna turn. jump in now. Yeah, hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. When when people introduce me, they yeah. go they go, uh when I introduce someone goes, Bert, I'd like you to meet uh, this person. As soon as I hear Bert, I'd like you to meet the soundtrack for the Chicago Bulls comes in when they're dong 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 dong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I hear myself getting ready to announce myself. Yeah. Then they like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is from North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. No, I've seen um, I've seen like regular people meet you before, <laughs> like people who don't know who you are. Yeah. And they're always like, oh, because uh, you're like. <laughs> the great thing is sometimes you go, I'm a lot. Like you tell them, like oh, this, yeah. is, this is going to be a lot to meet me. <laughs> I had, I remember the, I remember when I first realized how much I was around people. Mm-hmm. There was this guy, Andre Vincent. Uh, he's a comedian. Um, his, he's a comedian. His brother's a promoter, I think, or a manager in London. But he's a comedian from London. And we were in South Africa together, and he was standing away from me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, and I liked him. I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, I need. Need a little space from you, and I said, "Why?" And he goes, "You cast a very large wake, and not everyone likes to be in that wake all the time." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "And he's like, we had tried killing. We'd we'd played a game with Tom Clark. We were like, let's see who can kill, get the closest to killing Tom Clark without Tom Clark knowing. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing that all day, and we were crying, laughing, and then Tom found out, and his feelings were hurt. And he was like, "Why would you pretend to kill me all day?" And I was like, "It's, it's better when you didn't know about it." Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and. Uh, and and Andre that day was like, I need some distance from you. And I, he was like, you're a lot. He's yeah. like, you you don't stop. It's all day. Yeah. And he was like, it's two in the morning. I just want to go to sleep. And I was like, do you want me to come to your room? And he was like, no, <laughs> no. I just want to go to sleep. And I was I talked to Leanne on the phone that night. And I was like, can I? Am I a lot? She goes, oh honey. Oh. She, she tells people. She tells everyone. She warns people who haven't met you. She's like, have you met him? Just kind of be prepared. Mm. I remember when Georgia was at this school called. They asked me if I would. They asked if I would host World Fair Day, and Leanne goes, "That's a bad idea." And she goes, "What?" And she goes, "You're asking my husband. It can be a little aggressive at times, and and it'll overshadow the kids." And man, all it was was different Asian countries, mm-hmm. and I just was making Asian jokes. You did host it. I hosted it, and at the end, I remember at the end, this is the one that killed. I go, the. The second grade was Japan, and the third grade was Korea, and Japan came o- and Korea came over, and they're like, "Hey, just so you know, you know, we're, our our our, you know, BB mops are now half off." And Japan came running over the second grade, and they're like, "Our our dumplings are now, uh, you get buy one get four free." And I go, just like the Japanese, cutting the legs out from the goddamn Koreans, <laughs> and they were like, "What the." And Leanne's like, he's done. I was in a kilt. I wasn't wearing underwear. I was on a stage. It was a lot. How old were your kids? Uh, I don't know. Georgia must have been in first grade. 
First grade. Yeah, it was a predominantly it was a predominantly uh, the hell Asian is in your school. fucking pockets, man. Predominantly an Asian school. I'm just taking everything out. Oh, I thought we could smoke cigars in here. That's probably a violation. No, uh, it, it's Annie and I are becoming roommates, and this is my room now. Oh, okay. And I can do whatever I want in my room. Okay, let's smoke in your room. Yeah, Annie, can we smoke in my room? Damages. Do you mean the smell of smoke? Do you, okay, if I was one, if I was one of your ladies, how many ladies do you let smoke in here, Annie? I'm putting out. I definitely put out. Yeah. <laughs> I freaked Annie out when I brushed my teeth with soap. Yeah, I think I wouldn't limit it to just any. <laughs> you think everyone was freaked out? A little bit. Really? Kind of. What about toothpaste? You don't like toothpaste? I don't like the taste of it. It's cleaner. It's like a cleaner feel with soap. Hmm. You always do that? Mm -hmm. My teeth aren't real though, so th th I think that's also part of it. That's you should probably lead with that. Yeah. Yeah. My teeth are all porcelain. All? I have. Oh my god! I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teeth that aren't porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're just you are a lot. You're a lot. <laughs> I have some gold ones, and then all, right. all them are porcelain. And so I, I started thinking, what? Like I get all these pitches for toothpaste of whiteners and and this and that, yeah. and I'm like, they're, you can't whiten my teeth. Yeah, they're, they're not real. Yeah. And so I was, and so one day I was like, I wonder if I if soap. But it started with it always. It started with my toothbrush is in my pocket, and I wanted to clean it. So I got some soap and I cleaned it, and then I and then I got done. And as I was brushing my teeth, it suds up. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't really taste it. <laughs> and then I was like, that's not that bad. And I, they felt cleaner. It literally sounds like a hobo telling you how you're doing shit wrong on the street, you know? And he's like, one day I discovered I was trying to polish these shoes, and I ended up putting the brush in my mouth. And uh, I was like, this tastes right, and that's what I've been doing. So I found that if I light my hair on fire, <laughs> it's an easier way to cut it. Yeah, just keep feathering it, brother. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I brushed my teeth with soap, and I watched Annie just. And he was, I, I thought it was just him watching, so I was doing it quick. And yeah. then I felt it was super aggressive to spit in his sink. But that's quick. what you do when you brush your teeth. Yeah, everybody spits in the sink. But not everyone brushes their teeth at other people's houses. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. That's true. Some people go like, I'll go to the bathroom and do this. Oh, yeah, do it discreetly. Yeah. Other people hold court. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I know. What is, well, I wonder what. I wonder if you could like find gen a genetic marker. Can I see that? My toothbrush. No, the cigar. Oh yeah, it's a nub. These are really great. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Where'd Where you get this? What? Where'd you get it? Uh, New Orleans. You had a good time. I had a fucking blast in New Orleans. These are awesome. Mm. We'll smoke it later. Yeah. We're smoking it right now. Right now in his house. We shut the door. Oh, that'll help. That will really. This room will smell like cigars <laughs> forever. <laughs> Okay. For ever. I think that smoke detector might go off. No. You don't think so? Let's find out. Any, you know the viewers right now, like for the good of the show, the viewers are going, man, they should light those cigars. Yeah. Uh, headphones. Put your headphones on. Why? Because they're asking you to? Sure. Are you putting a dip in? Yeah, might as well. You need a spit cup? No, I'll swallow it. Really? <laughs> that was too many. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Oh, you got, you got a very nice hat. Thank you. I don't want to move my hat. Where'd you get the hat? I got the hat in New Orleans. New Orleans was fucking awesome. How come you don't like New Orleans? I don't know. It's fine. Why did I put the headphones on? Because they asked you to. Because you were asking uh, any questions. Yeah, you just kept talking. But I was just going to say that as long as you're paying, you're good to do whatever you want. Man. How much How much does it cost for me to smoke a cigar in this room? I have no idea. I haven't tried to do that yet. Well, if there's a sprinkler system, then it's going to be pretty expensive for you. Yeah. But, Nadav, sprinkler systems aren't based on smoke. It's not. There's not a sprinkler. There's not sprinklers in here, is there? There's no sprinklers no. in here. No. no one has sprinklers in their house. I have sprinklers in my apartment. Yeah, I had one in my last Apartments are different than a house. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and you know, Nadav, those are based off of heat. All right. No, they're not based off smoke. Smoke doesn't set a sprinkler off. It's fire. You know what? I got to say something. Shoot. This is one of the few times Bert's making a really good point. Yep. Uh, New Orleans was a fucking blast. Let's, let's start. 
Let's start with the weight loss challenge. Yeah, so um, a couple weeks ago, at this point, yeah, you were the most enormous you've ever been in your life. Uh, 263. And by the way, I know I was fatter at all right. times. You said you weighed, you, uh, yeah. Yeah. And you decided enough is enough. And now you not only are trying to be healthier and, and lose weight, but you've got your whole crew that you tour with on a health kick too. I got, I, so what I did is, so we did a we did a, a hydration challenge one time because mm -hmm. I, I th we thought it would be better to be hydrated. It would help your blood pressure. Everything's great when you're hydrated. Yeah. And so I said a hundred dollars to anyone who finishes their a gallon of water. You had to drink a gallon a day. Mm -hmm. You get a hundred dollars if you finish your gallon of water. If I don't finish mine, but if I finish mine, no one gets a hundred dollars. Okay. And so it was like a challenge. Did they hide your water and shit? No. Yeah. Well, it no. It just. No one, no one was on anyone's team, and then they just stopped drinking water, and I was drinking water. And okay. I was like, well, it, it kind of wasn't fun. So then I decided I was, I was going to do a weight loss challenge, and I said, okay, I'll give fifty bucks for every pound you lose. And then I was like, and then I was like, but if I challenge them, then they're not going to support me, and you want to support, you want support in that system, totally. So I said, and then I'll tell you what, I'll give you fifty bucks for every pound I lose. And then they were like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, fifty bucks. So that way. It incentivizes you guys to eat healthy and lose weight, but it more importantly to keep me on track. Yeah. Dude, these guys were fucking Nazis. Really? I mean, they were so aggressive. If the second I like if I went to eat anything, they go, Don't eat it. Nope. And they take it away from me. And then it and then it we at the end of the night where I like your everyone's time went on, I go one more drink and they're like, You're done, go to bed. And I was like, well, I'm, I think I could do one more drink. And they're like, nope, no one give him a drink. Go to bed. You need to go to bed. You got weight to lose. And so I'd go to bed. I'd wake up in the morning. Everything was healthy. We ate vegan. We ate clean. We ate really great. And then we did activities all day. We played disc golf every day, walked like three miles every day playing disc golf, pouring sweat, kettlebells. We went to on it. I worked out with Rogan. I mean, they planned it. Like, it was a real health trip. So how was the workout with Rogan? It was fucking intense. Yeah. Yeah. And Rogan's not, like, Rogan's like a guy where when he works out, his brain sh shifts. Totally. And he gets really into it. Mm -hmm. You know me, I'm kind of like a fuck around guy a yeah. little bit. I complain, I talk shit, and Rogan What shifts. kind of workout did you guys do? We did a workout with John that we're, we're going to do, mm -hmm. hopefully tomorrow, if we can do it. And it was, it was the weirdest. He said, because he... John, I think, run, is the head trainer guy okay. on it. Okay. And uh, he's like, you know, I, I could, he's like, I, I, he goes, I could do a workout with Rogan where I just throw tons of weight on a bar, but he's going to do that anyway. Like, I, I could just throw weights everywhere, and he's going he's gonna to lift the weights. He goes, I like to get in between the muscles, like the places where Rogan doesn't know that he needs work. So we did all, like, hip flexors, uh, glutes. We did all these leg movements, mm -hmm. like bizarre leg movements, to the point where I was like, my left leg doesn't work. Right. Like, it doesn't work the way my right leg works. I never noticed that, that my dexterity in my right leg is so much more acute. Like, I can, I, I, like, we were doing these hacky sack things where you'd put your foot on the outside and then put your foot on the inside and then, like, go back this and just holding on to the thing. Dude, I was, I was the hardest I've ever had to work out, and there's no weight involved. Yeah. And then we did... Um, we had those, the like clubs, we did some club workouts with some lunges. Then we did these kettle, my, this kettlebell thing where we just held two, Rogan held like fucking 45s or two forty fives. I had like, held like twenties or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you hold them like this. Mm -hmm. And for two minutes, you just hold them like this and do lunges. And I fucking, it was like my, all my arm, all my chest, all my side, everything fucking still hurts. It was a killer workout. Dude, it was, and it was all, but it was all very like doable. The hardest one. I cheated so bad too. It's funny because there's a room full of people watching, you know, like everyone's working out. But he had us do these like bear crawls. So like, you get on your toes and your hands, but your feet are bent. Mm -hmm. So you're like feet are like like you're like, is that like uh, on your hands and knees. Yeah. But then take your knees off the ground. Yeah. And then do you a crawl across the room like that? Mm -hmm. And he's obviously he's watching jokes. Joe's doing it perfectly. He's like, that's it, Joe, that's it. And I looked, and I just got up and walked. And then I got back down, and someone was watching. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, I, I can't do it. I think it was too hard. I was like, yeah. I, and...
I did that like three times because yeah. we had to go back and forth, and Joe's doing it perfectly. Like yeah. you can see, he's like commenting on like great, great, great structure, Joe. Great structure, Joe. Use that core. They feel that core. Feel that core. And he's talking to Joe, and I just get up and I walk, and then I get back down, and there are people in the room going. Because everyone's a fucking savage on it. Everyone's yeah, like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? But it was awesome. We're going to do that workout tomorrow. Okay. And it was, it was. I mean, I was pouring sweat. And then the best part, the best part was uh, hanging out with Joe. You never get to, you know, I never get to really hang out with Joe, really. Like, I, I, he's, I always do a podcast. And it's, you know, before the podcast or after the podcast. But what was great was uh, just fucking bullshitting for like 45 minutes as he stretched. I didn't stretch. Joe, John's like, you guys need to stretch. Joe's fucking. He really fucking, yeah. He fucking legs out here, yeah. head between his legs, and he's like, and I'm just sitting crisscross. Like, you want to see me suck my cock? And he, <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting crisscross applesauce, drinking a peanut butter smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> I drink it so fast, I hadn't eaten in forever. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Oh, uh, and so he. I hope. Hopefully, we'll get those smoothies tomorrow. Okay, they have smoothies fucking, there. The peanut butter smoothies okay. and on it. Like, that's, what, that's what we'll look forward to. Like, can all, we get these peanut butter smoothies? And they're like, let's work out first, guys. Yeah, but that guy John's fucking great. He, you know, I I've been doing workouts for my tricep mm -hmm. to like build strength, and I'm really good. And now I can do skull crushers with ten pounds, and I it doesn't tremble. It just looks like a regular arm. Uh -huh. Um, but he did this thing where he had like me crawling, and I immediately felt it on a on the outside part of my tricep, and I was like, I have not been working the outside part of my tricep. And he got in there. It's amazing when people understand people's bodies. Like, you yeah. know, like, yeah. I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you if I knew, if I knew how to work out. Like, if you said, go work out and you put me in the gym, I, I, I revert to like ninth grade where I go chest and tries. You know, like, yeah. I don't, and then guys like John or Lacey, my trainer, when they have different workouts where they're like, it's really impressive. And then we went next door. So we get done, right? Yeah. On it, by the way, hooked me up. Fucking 500 pounds worth of kettlebells. All the fucking supplements. They're like, stay healthy on the road. Gave me everything. Awesome. Everything. And we've been taking all their supplements, doing kettlebell work. It really was like, it was. you know, it's amazing. The gift of health, of someone going like, here, take these. And then all of a sudden you're like, fuck, we have... We have kettlebells. We should do a workout. And so you yeah. do Keith Weber's six-minute workout. If you've never seen Keith Weber's six-minute workout, mm. it's fucking insane. Have you ever seen it? No. Keith, type in Keith Weber's six-minute workout. This kettlebell workout will crush you in six, six minutes. minutes. In six minutes. In six minutes. Is it one of those where you go from one to the other? Yeah, one to the other. Yeah, it's I've like done, I've done goblet one. squats. Yeah, yeah. It's 12 exercises descending in order. So it goes like 12 squats, tw 12 Amer 11 American, whatchamacallits, 10 burpees. Yeah, like... Yep. Goblet thrusts. Yeah. Twelve dude, this will burn you the fuck out. And so uh so we get done mm -hmm. at on it. This is I'm so excited I'm doing this today. Okay. So we've done it on it and uh we're getting ready to get on the bus, we're loading up all the kettlebells on the bus, and this very attractive young lady, probably twenty five years old, all dressed in white, like uh like real cute, comes running out. She's like, Bert and I was like, Hey and she's like Oh my god, I'm like a huge fan, and I was like, "Oh, cool." She, and oh, now everyone on my team's like, "Who the fuck's this?" And then she goes, "She goes, why don't you come check out our our shop, our our store, mm -hmm. our thing, our facility?" And I go, "Sure, what is it?" She goes, "Do you like saunas, IVs, uh, polar plunges, and and massages?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's all the shit I like. Yeah, that's only the stuff I like. Yeah, that's all. That's it." And she goes, "That's what we do." And I was like. Are you fucking serious? She was like, yeah, come check it out. A huge sauna, three polar plunges, deprivation tanks, those 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 sensory deprivation tanks. Yeah. And then they have this masseuse. This woman's name's Kimberly. She looks at me and she goes, do, do you have any problems? And I go, yeah, I have my sciatic nerve. She goes, come here. Sits me on a table, does this like Reiki stuff where she goes, mm -hmm. bleh, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. bleh, bleh, bleh. Bleh, bleh. Yeah. And then... Sounds she professional. touches it uh -huh. and goes, is that it? And I went, yeah. She goes, lay down. She touched my body in a way that no woman has. No woman ever. No woman or man. I'll even say man. She read my body like. Duh, 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 duh. That looks like your asshole. That's what she did. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. She goes like this. Yeah. And then she goes like this. And then. Yeah. Yeah. 
She strong? No. Oh. No soft. I mean not soft, uh but just regular. Yeah. And and she her her husband's like a personal trainer for the Chiefs or something. Okay. And so she fucking pulls my leg and like all this sciatic tension I've had just starts releasing and then she goes I, I it was amazing. I Tom, I was like I've never felt more connected with a person quicker. She read my body and was like, you have problems here, here, and here. And I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly it. And then she gets Dave. You know Dave? Yeah, I can yeah, I can say it, right? You know Dave? I can say it, right? Dave got pretty fucked up one night and, and face planted. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, he got really fucked up and then laughed himself unconscious and then <laughs> face planted. And, and it, was, it, was, I mean, it was scary. I thought it was a joke, so I thought it was fucking hilarious. But he got it, he got pretty fucked up, and then he had numbness in his fingers, and <laughs> yeah, we were like we were like that was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, and he broke his nose, like like his nose was all jacked. She fucking fixed his nose. Really? Yeah. She grabbed his nose and started she pulling goes, it apart. She goes, yeah. She goes, yeah. And then she goes, she grabs his nose and she goes, breathe, and he starts breathing and breathing, and then he gets up and he goes, holy fuck, my nose is fixed. And I was like, yeah. And she did all the stuff on his back. And he's like, God damn it, man. My arm, all day, he was like, I'm going, we're going to her today. We're going back to this Kuya place today after this. Mm -hmm. Sauna, by the way, every woman there is fucking gorgeous, number one. Every person that works there, everyone that is there. It's all women that are there. And they're all beautiful. I mean, everyone's fucking hey, gorgeous. I'll go. Yeah. I'll go. You want to go? Sure. And sauna and polar plunge, it is fucking awesome. And they've got, they got ketamine. I, maybe I shouldn't say that. Well, I think I can say that. They've got ketamine IV drips. They've got uh, they've got a, 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 a snuggle puddle. A what? Snuggle puddle. What's that? Uh, am I saying it right? A snuggle room? A like, snuggle room? Yeah, like where you, when you get done your treatments, mm -hmm. everyone goes into this room and just kind of like snuggles. I think. I might be reading it wrong. I think you're reading that wrong. I'm not. Peter, am I reading it right? It's just, just. Yeah. Never mind. It was. It's fucking awesome. You got to check it out. It is so fucking badass. I can't believe it. We're only twenty two minutes into this thing. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. You know why? Why? You're a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our next shirt. Yeah. There's a okay. Ready? <laughs> yeah. We're, we're gonna sell two shirts on the show. On okay. this show. Okay. It's two bears craves, and one says, "I'm a lot," and the other shirt says, "He's a lot." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can get them as you're a couple. Yeah, I it, love it. Yeah. Um. You uh, you were here when I was gone, and you did a, a show, and then I, I saw that you were backstage, and Native went to the show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, it was crazy it was just to watch them really glow about how amazing I am as a yeah, comedian. Yeah. Nadav was like, was like, you are the best. And I was really? Like, he, kept going, he kept going like this. I go, what? And he goes, goat. You're the goat. I think that's... Wow. No. Native, was, you went to the show, right? I did, yeah. Yeah? Good time? Yeah, it was great. It's uh, it's always fun watching watching you guys up there, and you know, I I saw last time I saw you guys a set was during the the Rose Bowl show, and it's it's fun to see it kind of change. How different are up. our shows? You mean from Bird's show to your show? Yeah. How different are our shows? It's it's a uh, it's pretty different. I mean, it's uh, Bert has a couple more wardrobe changes than you. <laughs> um, he plays the hits, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, you know, it's just a real emotional if you, if, roller coaster. If you had a bit that you that people would want to hear again, what bit would it be? Do you think? Like, if you had one bit that, like at the end, well, the, like what what people yell out? Yeah, do they yell out for certain bits? Yeah, yeah. I mean, was that was that the show Nadav that I did that I pulled up my phone? Um, I don't recall that. I, I don't think so. Okay, had, okay. Uh, who show you like more? I like yours, Tom. <laughs> Wow. That's, believe me, that's just he's just well trained. Wow, Nadav. That that wasn't genuine. Nadav, if you yeah. said if you said as a backstage experience, who shows better? I mean, I think I think uh each Why don't of you, you why don't you walk Tom <laughs> what it, why don't you walk Tom through the through what it's like hanging out with me backstage? First off. Sure. So first off, in meeting you guys, we go to find your, your bus, which has your face on it, and you have managed <laughs> to park it 
right uh, like where the most foot traffic is. So everyone's just <laughs> knocking on the bus, being like, "Hey, really? Dave, you cooking up meat?" Like everyone, like it's just in in, in everyone's uh, uh, peripheral. And um, yeah, like they, it's you definitely do touring the way Bert likes to do touring. I said that the other day. I was like, I think. I'm I'm never gonna be known as like the greatest comedian that ever lived, but there is no comedian that tours more fun than I do. I would I I haven't even been on tour with you, and I agree. Like I like you know, I I think the amount of activities we do, and then we definitely like. I mean, we I you asked in the job. We cooked I see, up I dry see aged your, steaks. Your fucking uh, stories. Food alone, you you already have the title. Oh, like dude. I mean, and I I I would. Here's how I'm being 100 percent honest with you. If I didn't like you as much as I do, mm-hmm. I would just call Dave and be like, "I'll pay you double what he pays you to come <laughs> cook for me," and like come on tour and then cook those steaks, dude. We because I've had his his cook and I'm like Jesus. Christ. I, I the one thing we embrace is that, and I think it's because we did this in the pandemic. Because we did it in the pandemic, we had we were forced to live in that bus. But man, we get we take people up on offers. So when people are like, "Hey, we want you to come check," we have a dry aged steak facility. We want you to come take a look in Chicago. It's the right. way to do it. Yeah, I, I've been doing it more too. I've been trying to enjoy what the cities have to offer more. Dude, it is the greatest. I you know I did that whiskey tasting that you did. Uh yeah yeah I did the whiskey taste was that the first time for you yeah I'd never done a whiskey see I taste thought thing. I thought you had um already done it no I mean I've done that's whiskey the same tastings. guy though I've done whiskey tastings before isn't he fucking fascinating he was like, fucking amazing it's why it's always like the coolest to hang out with somebody who's like a real expert in something that guy but gives you a lesson the funnest thing in the world is to be around people that are passionate Passion- about something yes that's it yes. and if you find someone it's like it's I don't do this enough but like. I really enjoy when people get excited about something. Mm-hmm. I like listening to them. Yeah. I don't listen enough. Like I don't like it's not my thing usually. Like usually I like to tell them about my passion. You know? I like talking more than I like listening. I think I like talking more than I like listening. I also think uh listening is not my thing is a good uh quote for you. Listening's not my like thing. Yeah, it's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and most people you shouldn't be listened to. What percentage of people do you think should be listened to? That's a, I mean, it's a, it's a valid point, you know. Let's, let's see, let's take this next. Let's take, let's do the. Let, what percentage of people do you think should be listened to, and what percentage of people do you think I'm better than them at talking? This is really going deep. Because now we're gonna get a percentage, and if you base that percentage on any interaction, yeah. then you're gonna have to say. In this scenario, Bert should be talking. The odds are in his favor. He should be talking and not listening. Right? Yeah. Let's let's do this. Okay. Okay. Uh let's take um let's take uh Bill Murray. Okay? Okay. Bill Murray. Bill Murray's a pretty good talker, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Probably one of the better talkers around. Mm-hmm. Or let's do Dave Chappelle. No one can deny Dave Chappelle's not one of excellent, the excellent talker. Jesus. When he talks, you want to listen, right? I do. Yeah. Okay, so we're at a dinner party. Yeah. Do you want Dave Chappelle talking or listening? Talking. Okay. Now Leanne Kreischer comes up, Oof. and she's like, "I got a story to tell you, Dave." In, in a great scenario, could you, real quick, take her vocal cords and put them in your pocket, mm-hmm. and then force Dave to go actually. Can I tell you a story? Right. And then everyone's there. Now, we could all agree that with Dave, right? Right. And I love that your two examples are Dave and Leanne, your wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, because she's the one that always tells me you need to let people talk more. And I go, no, 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 no. They're not interesting. Right. They're, I, I, and I can spot out, look, if but you're- by your logic, though, in this hypothetical scenario, she's not interesting. Yeah, right. Because she's talking to Dave Chappelle. Okay. Do you think she's a good storyteller? No. My wife is so bad at telling stories. My wife marries herself to the truth. Right. She needs to she needs a story to be factually accurate 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how she tells a story. Right. I don't need you to I don't need you to know the truth. I'm not a fucking I'm not a documentarian. Yeah. I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. I want you to feel how I felt. 
And the truth is a fucking byproduct of that. I want the story to be true. I can't be a, I can't be a hundred percent not true. But it's gonna be a lot of seasoning on this story. Uh, more seasoning than truth. Yeah. Like I need you to. I need you to fucking feel it. Yeah. You know, I I, I told you. I, I know. I know. I told you this story. It's a great story, right? This is how I tell it. We, Georgia broke her jaw, right? Yeah. We take her to the doctor. The doctor's like, we need to put her under. It's really traumatic. He can't get her to stop breathing. She's panicking. And he goes, listen, we can't have her doing panic breaths with this thing. Mm -hmm. Can you get her to calm down, breathe normally, and then we can slide the thing over first. So you, I need you to get right to her face. So I go up and I go, it's okay, baby girl. And I talk to her. And then very casually they put the thing. I go, look, we're going to smell it, you know? And we put it over her mouth. I start crying. I go into the lobby. I'm sobbing crying as they put Georgia under to do this oral surgery. This black woman's in the lobby. Now, do you want to hear the way Leanne tells the story? Do you want to hear the way I tell it? Let's go with Bert first. Okay. So black woman's trying to calm me down in the lobby. You know the story already. Black woman's trying to calm me down. And I'm like... And not having it. I'm crying because I think I just killed my daughter. I'm freaking out. I'm a brand new dad. I'm like fucking sobbing, crying. And this black woman's trying to make eye contact with me to let me know it's going to be okay. You know how they can do. Sometimes black women can calm you down. You've seen The Matrix. Yeah. And so, so I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I get up. I go. They go, they go uh, your daughter's fine. They grab me and Leanne. We go back. We grab Georgia. She's got gauze, blood everywhere. Take us to this receiving room. We're sitting in the receiving room. Oh, fucking finally. Thank God she's okay. I stopped crying. And as I stopped crying, the curtain opens, and it's the black woman from the lobby. You know this story. Mm -hmm. Black woman from the lobby puts her hand on my shoulder and goes, it's tough being a daddy, isn't it? Whitney fucking Houston, right? Whitney fucking Houston. And I'm like, holy shit, this is Whitney Houston. Leanne almost dropped Georgia. She sat down with Georgia, played with Georgia's hair, and calm, and talked to Leanne about being a mom and being a dad and about parenting. It was fucking awesome, right? Great fucking story. Great fucking story. You want to hear Leanne tell it? Okay. So Bert, so so they put George under. We walk out into the lobby, and Whitney Houston's in the lobby. Story's over. Yeah. Fuck Leanne's story. Yeah. Fuck Leanne's story. Yeah. I go, Leanne. Leanne. She goes. She goes. Well, but how? Why? Why do you not tell them it's Whitney Houston? I go because the reveal is right. after. Right. You got to build. Some, the, yeah, yeah. The reveal is after. Yeah. She goes. But didn't you know it was Whitney Houston? I go. I don't know, babe. I don't remember because I know my story. My yeah. story is what I believe the truth to be. So I remember that. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And But Leanne just wants to take a story and then go. And then Whitney Houston was in the lobby. She had a bodyguard with her. She looked pretty. Oh, and then she also came back and said hi. <sighs> but, 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 but why? what's the point of you talking then? Yeah. Right? We should have her vocal cords removed. Right. What is the point? So you go to a party and they go and you get one shot. Right? Mm -hmm. You're meeting people. Do you want to put all your chips in front of Leanne to introduce you guys as a couple? Or do you want to put your chips in front of Bert? I'll answer for you. Yeah. It's Bert. Yeah. Now, we, we take that and we put that into a broader stroke. Okay? Yeah. We're sitting at a dinner table and Dave Chappelle sits down. Mm hmm Now, Dave Chappelle and Leanne took the same Uber. Okay? Yeah. And they, randomly, they took the same Uber. And then they're sitting at the same table. And, and, Leanne goes, man, we had a crazy Uber ride. Isn't that right, Dave? And he goes, you guys would never believe it. Okay. Yeah. They go, Tom, who would you like to tell that story, Leanne or Dave Chappelle? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't take me long. Right. Yeah. So that that's why I don't listen. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good. It's a strong case. I mean, it's it's, it's you know, there's people here right now listening, going, yeah, my wife's horrible at telling stories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's almost like Leanne rips three pages out of a book and just starts there. And you're like, no, what? I'm so confused. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, even Christina actually goes, uh, like when someone's like, what happened? She just goes, Tom should tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because she's a professional. Right. She's a professional. Now, I guarantee you there's times where she needs to tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she, right? Right, right. And, but and most of the time, like if we're both there, actually, even with some of the time when it's her story, she'll go, Tom should tell you the story. Cause, really? cause, because of the the way that I shape the story. Yeah. You know, the, the detail, what like, and also I don't like, I, she'll drop key ingredients to the story. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm like, no, you have to mention that the guy actually came in and told you to leave. Like yeah. she'll, she'll leave out a detail that makes the story move along or builds tension in the story. It, it, it shoots me in the foot with Leanne's, Leanne's problem is, she doesn't understand that a story needs a beginning, 
middle, and an ending. Mm -hmm. Leanne will start the story at the beginning and then just tell you the ending and then keep telling you the story yeah. and then tell you the ending again. Yeah. And you go, hold on. No, it gets one ending. It gets one right. ending. That's the reveal. It's almost like no matter how many times we say it, people forget that women are fucking stupid. And like... <laughs> By the way, yeah. Can I? T this is the byproduct of this. Yeah. Is that you? Like my stories are good, but even when something happens to me traumatic, no one fucking believes it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like Isla almost killed me on a jet ski, and when we pulled back in, I was yeah. really upset. Yeah. And Isla goes, "Dad's about to tell you one yeah, of his I dad remember. stories," I and I'm like, "Hold on, are you getting in front of this?" And then yeah. Leanne's like, "Okay, here we go. Le here we go. Let's let's hear it. Let's hear it." Yeah. So yeah. you got thrown off the jet ski. Yeah. Were you going like this? <laughs> and I was yeah. like. Yeah, I was. And they're like, yeah, because oh, everyone feels thrown like this. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, motherfucker. Yeah, so if you actually had something like really dramatic happen and you tried to tell it, people would be like, oh, this is just a regular story. We, well, you know what? It's The problem is like like uh, when, I re when I tore my tendons off my arm, mm -hmm. no one believed, no one believed it. it. Of course. <laughs> and Leanne's like, okay. Yeah, if I would have been on set with you and you'd be like, I think I'm really hurt, I'd be like, you're fine. Yeah, I, that's, the, that's the problem. Or like... Uh, the other thing that I fucks fucks me up is I've I like I can't tell any I can't people don't care about weight loss with me anymore because I've talked about it so much. Of course, or like drinking, they're like whatever. Okay, yeah. we get it. You quit drinking. Okay, you're like, well, I actually haven't had a drink in two days. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite when I've talked to you and you're like, I've actually quit drinking. I'm like, no shit. You're like. I haven't had a drink since Wednesday. I'm like, it's fucking Friday. And yeah. Like, well, I haven't drank since Wednesday. Sometimes I'll take little victories. Like, I'm not drinking right now. In this moment. Yeah, and I and I want to Sarah, very badly because I don't need to do anything yeah. today. Are you someone who says new year, new me, but then you have no idea where to begin changing things because you're already so perfect? Lucky for us, Me Undies says don't change. Maybe change those undies. Give your 2022 and underwear drawer the update it deserves with the most fun and comfortable undies in the world. It is kind of the most fun thing to do to toss out old underwear. You shouldn't be keep keeping underwear for decades, okay? You should do a refresh. Throw out the old stuff. I mean, it's down there with your junk and your ass. Get a new, fun, and exciting, fresh, cool design. And look, Me Undies has it all. Someone wise once said, refresh your underwear drawer and you'll refresh your life. I like that. And that actually seems like it's pretty accurate. With super soft undies, socks, and bralettes that come in everything from classic to adventurous prints, you can build a collection that not only makes you feel comfortable, but it also expresses your personality. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guaranteed, go to meundies.com slash bears. That's meundies.com slash bears. Bears. Are we smoking these between shows? We're smoking right now. Any for real. I think if you crank the AC on, that's like a filter. Tell me what this liability is. Give me a price he, he's point. He's just saying that, like you know, if the landlord tells him, "Hey, oh, you don't own this house." Did, la did the landlord specifically say? For sure, he didn't specifically. He didn't say that. specifically say that. Yeah, which is it's a really good case for you're smoking. Yes. yes. What's your deposit? Hundred dollars. Thousand. Jesus, fuck. That's a lot. I think it's racism. Do you think he looked at any and he was like, and no, uh, you and, know, uh, smoking uh, blunts and what you guys do. <laughs> and any was like, just so used to racism, he's like, Bert, we're not allowed to smoke blunts in here. And the guy was like, you know, it's normally a thousand, five thousand, five thousand deposit, five thousand. Yeah. 5, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and also, do, let's do dial down the rap if yeah. you don't mind. Let's do impressions of any's racist. Uh, landlord. Okay. All right. Listen, homeboy. <laughs> I love Nadav's groans often come at the weirdest places. Oh, 
He's like, listen, this isn't a trap house, okay? So I don't want you running your hose up in and out of here and smoking blunts and selling drugs. Yeah. And then and he's like, and he starts bringing curtains in. I would love to watch his landlord live across the street and figure out what the fuck goes on in here. You know something? Racism is so foreign to me, I can't even do it as a joke. <laughs> All right, you black son of a bitch, just keep that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is it is pretty odd. Like any is a any is a it as a landlord to watch any come in and and then watch people come in and out of this house. Oh, if you're watching this house, yeah, you'd be like there's some wild shit going on in there. Yeah. For sure. This guy just pulled up in yeah. a Porsche yeah. and is eating egg whites. And there's fucking How come there's so much equipment coming in and out of yeah. here? What, what are you doing, here, man? <laughs> We did a we did a shoot one time for f- this TV show, Fresh Baked Video Games, and we were just bringing a bunch of shit. People were watching us bringing a bunch of shit to shoot in this house, and then the film commission showed up and they shut us down. They're like, "You don't have a permit to shoot here," and we, like out of nowhere, and I was like, in my head, I was like, "What? What snitches?" Yeah, like they called the film commission. For sure, they do. And we were like, and they're like, "We're like, we're not shooting a movie. We're shooting a TV show." And they're like, "We know what you're doing." And I was like, "What?" And he goes, you know, no reason to fucking lie, all right? They thought I was the producer. Mm-hmm. And by the way, we had these hot chicks. Cause we were testing out these these uh, seats when you play video games that vibrate. So we got, like, fucking strippers and porn stars mm-hmm. to sit in them. And they're looking at the strippers and porn stars, and they're in bathing suits. And they're like, we know exactly what you're doing. And I was like, we're doing a TV show. And they're like, bullshit. And, uh, and I was like, and they shut us down. And we couldn't film it. And I was like, that was fucking crazy. And then, like... Two months later, I'm watching a porn jerking off, and it's yeah. the exact same stairwell that was in that house. It's a glass stairwell. And I was like, oh, that was oh. a porn location. Yeah. And they've been shooting porns there forever. Yep. And the neighbors are like, fuck, another porn. So. Yeah, of course. Um, and you should shoot porn in here. Didn't take a lot of convincing. Did not. Um, I actually felt like I was going to shoot a porn when uh, when I got Unk Shine. Uh, you know that guy. Wait, did you guys shoot a porn? Well, it felt like it was going there. Um, he ate whipped cream out of her asshole, right? Well, she actually had a. She's a porn star. She's naked, but she had a thong on um, because she was like, "Is he tested?" And I was like, <laughs> "No." Um, and and basically, she was like, "That's all I care about. Like, is, is somebody tested?" And I go, "He's not tested." And she goes, "Well, then he can't lick my asshole," you know. And I was like, "Okay." Like it was just for the bit of the. Of the would you b- banana split, but then he was like, you could see in his eyes that he was like, this, uh, like it was taken over him, and I was like, and that's a, that's a wrap. Let's hey cut, and he was like, hold on. I was like, oh shit, and it made me sad, like to be in the presence of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, this is exciting at all. I was just like, I really want to go. Let's can we can we open the door? And the uh, cleaning crew from that hotel were posted up outside our door. It's like they knew what was happening. So when we opened the door, they were like looking over, and I was like, what's up? And they were like, nothing. We're just waiting to clean the room. And there's three people. I'm like, it takes three people to clean the room? Oh, you shut the fucking fuck Ramada in? Yeah, they knew. They knew what was up. You got a Ramada in. You walked in with a film crew. Yeah. Unk Shine. Unk Shine. Uh, Le- and then, Leia. Will you pull up the picture of the porn star? I Leia see Falcon, like. I think her name. Leia Falcon. Yeah. Man, if you name your kid Leia Falcon, she's, you she's going to be a porn star. <laughs> think that's her name fuck that's not her name although leia falcon's pretty fucking hot that's not her name that leia falcon's a power lifter maybe oh. that's her mm, yep that is her you know what's hilarious uh, is that what <laughs> so you see like that yeah one in the middle there <laughs> so he goes uh he goes i'm gonna lick your booty it's gonna change you, you ain't never had your booty licked before and she goes, apparently you're not familiar with my work. Because <laughs> he didn't know who she was. <laughs> He's like, I bet you've never had a guy lick your ass. She was like, mm, I've had like three cocks in my ass at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we always end up on porn? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 w- I was trying to write a self-help book. But uh, I mean, I, I take it back. I sold it. I sold a self-help book. You sold a self-help book. I sold a self-help book. And then I... Then I took back the deal, and I was like, you know what? If I'm, I'm I don't want to, I don't want to do a deal with anyone. If I, I'm, I'm going to just write the book the way I want to write it, and yeah. then I'll just give it to people. Or I was like, or I'll just release, self-release it. Why? Like self-publish? Because I don't, 
I didn't wasn't really happy with the entire process. Oh, okay. Like uh, the only thing I was happy with was the editor. I loved my editor. Your self help book was like the one that you were gonna do. Yeah. What, what kind of like life advice? Yeah. Uh, how how a person like me mm-hmm. with minimal talent, not a lot of good looks, succeeds in life. Okay. You know. You want to give a? You want to share one of your tidbits? Sure. Okay. Got to give yourself a nickname. <laughs> Chapter one. All great men have great nicknames. The Rock. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Were you always? Because I don't even remember. Were you always your nickname? Always the Machine. I have millions no. of nicknames. I guess what I was B Man. Yeah. Um, Birdie Boy. Yeah, Birdie Boy. Yeah. Uh, Nature Boy. Edward Penis Lips. Uh, I, I had. I've had. A t- and I've given myself millions of nicknames. Yeah. I've. I. I wasn't happy with Bert when I got Bert. Yeah. I remember. I my first nickname when I was in first grade. I changed my name to Flash, and 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 I wouldn't respond to Bert. And and then my dad ruined it. And my was, youngest son, whose name is Julian, every day you say, Julian. And he goes, my name's not Julian. I'm not Julian. And he gives himself new names almost every day. And I write them down. These are the names he refers to himself by. So he calls himself. He's like, I'm not Julian. I'm like, who are you? He goes, I'm Mr. Dog. I'm like, all right. And Doctor. My favorite was Mr. Parking Lot. He was like, I'm like, what all if right, your Mr. son? What if your son? Fire too? window. That was one. I'm window. I'm like, all right, window. He gets really mad if you don't <laughs> no, call him Julian. I'm like, it's a very interesting. Yeah. You know. You know what? Blender. You know what, Tom? Yeah. He's a lot. <laughs> He's a lot. <laughs> what if you get a son like me? Oh my god. <laughs> he is a lot. <laughs> he is a lot. <laughs> he almost made me drink toilet water. That's the other kid. <laughs> That's my oh, wait, other wait, son. Who's, who, am I, who are we talking about? You don't even know my kids? Wait. That's Ellis. Oh, Ellis? Yeah. Oh, shit. You're talking about Julian. I'm talking about Julian. Yeah. The oh, whole other kid. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, my God. Ellis is a lot. Julian is the one who's like, called me fire. I'm like, all right, fire. Right, fire. Mr. President. <laughs> Doug Days. Doug Days is my favorite one. The other one when he goes, I'm red light, green light, yellow light. So I was like, Oh my god! All right, so I, hey, red light. He goes red light, green light, yellow. Light. You gotta say all three fucking lights. Oh my god! To get his attention. See, I got my thing was the girls. The girls never called me dad. They no, said, no, they always gave me nicknames. So I and I it would bother me because it, mom was Liam was mom. Yeah, and I was like fetus at one point. I was fa fetus. Yeah, uh, Bertrude McFuzz. Yeah, like they just always gave me a nickname. They're so sweet to her and to me. I mean, look at my fucking. I saw night. that. I saw that. That's from last night. That's from last night. Because when what? I get home, they go, "We want to hurt you and torture you." And I'm like, "Why do right. they do that to you?" Because I think that's like the I'm the guy they can do that with. Do you so, think it's because you're dead inside and they're trying to get emotion out of maybe. you? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be. That's it fucking. Could be. It could be. They fucking hurt me. They really hurt me. For real? I mean, this, you know, these are all, I bleed from most of these. Oh, my God. They scratch me, they Can I bite tell you, me. You did such a great job on when going full shaved head is such a good move for you. You think so? Yeah, because yeah. I, I looked at a video you did with uh, Tim Heidecker, mm-hmm. and you had, like, some hair. Yeah. And uh, It's better to be clean. Shaved. Yeah, and you looked, I watched I watched that interview with, how did you, did you know Tim Heidecker? No. They just asked you to be on the show? You know, you know Doug pretty well, right? No, I don't know him well at all. I, I know no. him pretty well, I think. I um I follow Vic. Uh, Vic Berger, you know, who, yeah. who does like a lot of their, he's on, he's on that podcast and he does like a lot of funny edits. So I've always like watched his stuff. It was, was that was, I, I was, I watched that Tim's stand up special. That's really funny. It's fu- It was fucking hilarious. And he just did the uh, parody of Rogan. I watched that. I, I, I actually, can I tell you, I really, I really enjoyed it and I want him to keep doing that. <laughs> it was really fun. And then they, I, um, I would forget, I would forget at times. That it wasn't a real podcast. Well, the the thing about the um, the the uh, the Rogan parody is that like you realize I was watching the two guys that that sat in, and you realize how you've been those guys. Like, oh, because when they were like, man, oh, that's, that's why like, I enjoy it. They're like, I was at the store, and they're like, man, he just kills. That yeah, just God, he kills. Like there's all these replica conversations, um, and talking about like the book they're reading about like <laughs> like. Some physics, you know, shit, how, like, robots can control, like, just all complicated, 
shit that I, I texted, is talked about on I texted that show? someone one of the fucking things that made me fall fucking it out was, laughing. I know. And it's and he loops it for 11 hours. So oh. it's an hour thing that's looped. Um let me see. I texted I was texting with Rosebud. It's yeah, it's really funny. He um is is presented by Fud Ruckers. That's his uh what was the sp- sponsor behind him? <laughs> the uh can I, by the way, since we are uh, s- celebrating Tim and Eric, Eric mm-hmm. War- Warheim, uh-huh. have you ever seen his Instagram? No. Dude, it'll make your dick hard. What? He is like a legit foodie. He just released, speaking of books, he just released a cookbook, I think. Really? Go to his Instagram. Dude, I thought, because I, 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 you can never tell with those guys what's a joke and what's not a joke. Yeah. And I thought he was doing a parody of food accounts, mm. like, because... But this guy knows his food, and he eats Jesus. the best goddamn food in the world. Hit his cookbook. Hit his cookbook. What does that say? I can't Foodheim? read Foodheim? Yeah. What does it say? I um, mean, make it bigger. It's been a few months now that uh, whoever that is and I released our food Bible. See? With another author. Yeah. Foodheim, we are blown away from all your love and support and kind reviews, seeing you all cook. From it brings a uh, cacho a pepe to tears in our eyes. For real, it's beautiful. For those of you who haven't picked up your copy, you saw it become a New York Times bestseller. You know, Helmy's got those pro tips. So it's a it's a legit it's, it, dude. It go through his go through his um, Instagram pictures. His the food he posts. I mean, that, they're great shots of the food so far. Oh, it, dude, he eats like a fucking king. I watch his his food comes up, and he knows his shit about food. Those guys are really interesting guys. I saw them live one time with uh um with a friend. I saw one of their live shows. Yeah. It's fucking they're fascinating dudes. They're so talented. I was I, I had a, I don't think they'd enjoy anything I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Isn't that interesting that you Oh, by the laugh? way, same for me. I don't think they'd yeah, enjoy it. No, I don't think that <laughs> I think we're the thing that inspires them to create the thing they make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think they would like it. And like, I would. By the way, I would try to be like, I know you don't like my stuff. Let's let's put on Bert's so I could see you hate something more. <laughs> Do you? I wonder what they would think if they. I don't. I bet they don't even know who the fuck I am. But I. But wonder what they think if they saw me. The beginning of my special where I take my shirt off. I would love to see how quickly they turned it off. They might watch for a while. They might. They, but I just realized they'd probably laugh for the very wrong reasons. Yeah. They would be crying, laughing. Yeah, yeah. And like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I, I like. like, them. like I we should do good. a character. They we made should. me laugh. They they used to do those things with Zach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zach, dude. And well, I remember, did you watch Billion Dollar Movie that they made? Uh uh-uh. uh I don't watch everything. I don't watch. The, there's like like the first few scenes in that movie made me laugh. Oh, yeah, so fucking hard. They made me laugh. They have a one where I don't know. There were Zach, Zach, and them walked in to a thing. Uh, they walked into a house. All yeah. I remember is the one line, and Zach was like, "The girls don't need to be right here." And Eric turns to the girls. He goes, "Girls, go wait on the wave runners. <laughs> go wait on the jet skis." And yeah. it's just such a I don't know. It yeah. made me fucking giggle. Whatever. No, it's very funny. Um, yeah, I that, I I. I Rosebud texted me. She's like, "Have you seen this?" And I was, I started watching the it. parody. Yeah, and it was, it was, I love parody. I love, yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I think that shit's well. Funny. It's so well done because it's like straight. Yeah, and like you could tell that people are like, "Where's like, where's the joke?" Yeah, like they're they're waiting for like a over the top punchline, but they stay in like the and they, little. They had things. to watch a lot of Rogan. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, but I also yeah. you could also watch a, a somebody that's was like just watch these three select ones. Yeah. You could kind of like, you know, find the the rhythm and the I don't know if I would enjoy parody of myself. Yeah, it'd probably be hard to watch. I I, I don't think I'd enjoy it. I think I'd be like I I would be like cuz I'm so sensitive. Yeah. I'd be like are, are, do you like me or if you like me and you make a parody of me, I'm That's cool different. with it. Yeah, but yeah. if you don't like me and make a parody of me, yeah. I think it, it would cuz especially those guys if they made a parody of me cuz it would be it would be all the things I don't like about myself. Of course, they would zone in on the things I hate about myself, and they'd nail. And then they would like repeat it and like punch in on it. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, Ooh. no, it would be rough for sure. It'd be rough. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about maybe I'll do a parody of myself first. 
Maybe I'll just do me. <laughs> I don't need to do a parody of me. I already do a parody of yeah, me. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're done. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Tim and Eric, can you do a Two Bears, One Cave? <laughs> oh, that would hurt my feelings so bad. Tim and fuck. <laughs> Let's do a parody of our show right now. Ready? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hot oh, Kool-Aid. Can I get in a word? <laughs> Wait, who do you think would play? Uh, Eric Warheim would be me. Um, I don't know, man. That's a good. You'd I mean, be t- Tim Heidecker. Would be you. Yeah, <laughs> but but Eric looks more like you. Yeah, and I look more like Tim. Yeah. Like we both have. Me and Tim have more like leading man, like jawlines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. Um, okay. What? So I finally I. Because a few weeks ago, I was so fucking dying to pull up the. Uh, it's Josh Robert Thompson that does the Morgan Freeman, and I saw that you got to see it. But oh, isn't it fucking... fuck? So he put it. He he sent it to me, but then he actually publicized it. Um, can you pull it up? The uh, the yeah. Can... Let's just so so people because I was talking who who don't know. We were talking all about like like white people, especially doing voices of other races and like when is it okay and then one of the things i said was like well if you fucking nail it like if you are perfect at it yeah then like you know what there's no ill will behind it but you're also nailing it and this guy is a comic voiceover guy josh is and um he heard us he got wind that we were talking about it and then he 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 go went he did it here so just go ahead and play it Hey, man, I just want to say thanks again for mentioning me on the show. I'm a big fan of Two Bears, One Cave, and I heard you and Bert talking about my Morgan Freeman voice. Um, You know, I I think most people would agree that Morgan Freeman is probably the greatest voice of all time, but what a lot of people don't know is that I do the voice of Morgan Freeman for Morgan Freeman. Uh, You know, it's kind of a, a Wizard of Oz situation. You know, pay no attention to the skinny white boy behind the curtain, you know. So now when you're hearing Morgan Freeman, and it may help for you to close your eyes at this point because it's going to be a little disconcerting uh, to hear that sound coming out my pie hole. But uh, when, when you hear Morgan Freeman, what you're really hearing is me. Uh, and, it, and it's a fun voice to do because uh, I like to go around and, oh, I narrate people's lives. You know, that's a fun game that I like to play. Um, I might narrate things like, well, Jimmy got up in the morning and brushed his teeth and took a shit and those kind of things. But in your case, I might say something like, uh, the two little bears, Bert and Tom, went inside the cave. Two bears in one cave. They stayed inside that cave for, oh, over six months. Now, most folks in town just assumed that the two little bears were hibernating. But the rest of us knew that Bert and Tom was up to some other kind of bullshit. Oh, maybe they was oiling down their pasty, ample, hairy bellies and playing a game of rub-a-dub-dub or some other perverted bullshit. Either way, it's something that we love to listen to. One of our favorite shows of all time. Two Bears, One Cave. I'm Morgan Freeman. Maybe. Get busy living or get busy... You know, shitting in the woods. I don't know what. I need that animated. Hey, play real Morgan Freeman. I want to hear a real Morgan Freeman. I mean, it's wild. That's crazy. I forget that it's not Morgan Freeman. Yeah, it really is something. I mean, he uh, he and he also does the pauses perfectly. You know, yeah, like he really pauses exactly the way Morgan Freeman would. It's um, yeah, it's it's something, man. He's so so talented at it god that's uh, that are you playing it i think he forgot yeah trying trying to find something that uh that's good and won't get us flagged um wait well, how do, what do you get flagged for youtube youtube if you have if there's something like copywritten you know like if it's like uh a clip from a cbs show then so what can't I, I can't say anything about coronavirus we get taken down right uh i don't know i don't know if you can't say anything i'm not sure i don't really know jeffrey epstein 
the trial. Oh, the, like what can't you say? You what are things Jesus, that you can't say on Elaine Gazella? Maxwell? Gazella. Jesus. There's not a lot you can't like talk about, but if you were to initiate something that somebody could easily repeat, that would get people. Uh, what do you mean? Like what? if you were to say, "Here's how you smoke alcohol." Like you can't do things. You can't kind of define how to do something dangerous. Let's stop right there. You can smoke alcohol. You yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Snort it too. Hold on. You can smoke <laughs> alcohol. Uh huh. How do you smoke alcohol? That's exactly what you said not <laughs> to say. exactly what yeah. we shouldn't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we got everyone Googling how to smoke alcohol. Can you really smoke alcohol? You can take it in rectally, too. All right, let's hear this real quick. I've seen the movies all the time. I'm with you. I've seen the movies. And uh, at some point, it at struck some me. At some point, rather, it struck me. Dramatically, how much? How uh, much? I wasn't in the movies. I wasn't in the movies. Do I sound like Morgan Freeman? It's really good. I kind of do. I'm Morgan Freeman. Uh, That's really good, man. Thank you. You've always pull up it. another person. I'll do another celebrity impression. I I just figured out I can do it if I can do it if if I hear them talking. Yeah, because that was spot on. Give me give me another celebrity. Pull it up, Alston or Ovid. 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 Uh, <laughs> Holy shit! Let me take a piss. You look for somebody while I take a piss. I'm, I I've got more. I've got more impressions. Ready? Okay. So yeah. pull up the ones we were working on. Okay, wait. wait I'm going to do it. You don't tell me who it is. Okay. Ready? Tell me who this is. Okay. Can you imagine what it's like to be a vampire? Oh, Tom. Is it Gilbert Gottfried? Nope. Can you imagine what it's like to be a vampire? Can you, can you imagine what it's like to be a vampire? I like the pixies. All right, play the Christina. Person. Yeah, I nailed it. You ready? Yeah. Gosh, how much do you want to be a vampire? Gosh, how much you want to make be a, a pact right now that you'll make me one? God. Gosh, how much do you want to be a vampire? You made her so much more unlikable. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna perfect Drew. Give me Drew. Oh, uh, yeah, ready go. I want to be one so bad. I want to be one so bad. Okay. Just NR uh, nicotinamide riboside. Okay, don't, give, me, give me words I know how to say. Uh oh. Okay, I just gotta get the tone. Give me some talk and Drew talking. I heard the story. Anyway, I heard the story. Anyway. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Mu- mu- mushrooms. Mushrooms. <laughs> thing hey man you gotta do something what are you gonna do you can put them hey in the truck hey man you gotta do something what are you gonna do hey man Hi, i'm dr drew Hi, hey guys i think uh i think we've reached the end of this bit nope 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 give me another one jay leno i think i just that's how you do it you just gotta listen to him closely and just i think yeah i think you have the right concept oh. idea down but i don't know if we're doing it jesus christ <laughs> Now, are people out of the state? Now, are people out? You know, I'm losing my voice. That's why I can't do it. No. Yeah. I wanted to be able to do impressions so bad when I was uh, young. When you see impressions at, at first, it's the most amazing thing. I remember watching Frank Caliendo when I was 26 years old. He fucking nails impressions. That is, can you see if you can see uh, Frank Caliendo? Uh, and you know that he does one thing that it is kind of niche and that you really have to follow this to really see how. But when you do, he's got this thing for NFL coach. He's like, he's really into yeah. doing impressions and like his Gruden impression. He does Gruden, Andy Reid. Like, I could do Gruden though. Like Gruden's easy. No, not the way he, his manner, he gets, he gets it down to the mannerisms. Yeah. This like, yeah, I don't know that everybody would be like, Gruden. Gruden. Uh, give me Gruden real quick. I'll, I'll bang out Gruden real quick. I'll tell you what. That, 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 that it's Frank. This team gave 125%. 125%. That's 110%. Not just 110%. 125%. It's a little bit of a Chicago accent. Ah. Yeah. Maybe I'm not the best at impressions. You know what? I'm hanging my hat up. I'm just going to do a Burt. And uh, that hat you got where? In New Orleans? In New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I can't believe you hate it. I don't hate it. You don't, but you don't love it the way I do. No. Okay. But you also, to be fair. I fantasize about it. No, I'm going to say that you also will come back from anywhere and be like, I fucking love 
Kansas City, yeah. Nashville, Chicago, Seattle. Oh, there's Portland, not a city Denver. I don't love. Right. You come back with that same. But that's, that's, that's because I'm a lot. That is because because, you're a lot. because there's places that you and Leanne don't like. You go, oh, I'm not a big fan of that place. Yeah. Then I go, I fucking love that place. But like, is there any place you don't love? The, you know how many times you've told me it was the greatest night of my life? Do you know how many times you've told me that? We're just triple digits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like but I live in, a top I, three. I, I live in a different reality, I think. <laughs> like I live in a, That's what schizophrenic people also say. I live in a fucking world where I only want the greatest things. Like I only want things to be perfect. The best. Yeah, and I have a problem with it. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Like when things start to fall apart or when things are real, like when things get very real, it starts to bum me out. You know, yeah. like little things like... Uh, I don't know. I, like, um, like a perfect example. When, this is going to sound maybe a bit of a stretch, but like when Priscilla started having knee problems, it fucked me up because I was like, I want everything to be perfect. I don't like. I don't like the. And Leanne is like, no, that's like if I lost part of my finger, I'd fucking, I'd, f I'd be like, so I don't get the whole finger for the rest of my life. Yeah, like that would fucking make me crazy. Does that make sense? I mean. <laughs> So, uh, this is almost it doesn't make sense to me when I'm saying it. Yeah. But like I like I I have a really great example that I can't use that I that it would explain it perfectly. Oh, good. <laughs> but, but I can't use it because I <laughs> like if Leanne cheated on me, uh -huh. I would it would destroy me because everything's perfect right now. Like I want it to be perfect. I got you. Like I want everything to be the best it can ever be, you know. And so like when and I don't like change a whole lot. So I, I like, I don't know, I, I I don't know, like yesterday waking up, like I wanted New Orleans to be everything, because I haven't been to New Orleans to be able to be in New Orleans throughout the pandemic. So I was like, let's get up and let's day drink. And everyone's like, well, we have two shows. Like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Everyone exp thinks I'm drunk on stage anyway. No one gives a fuck. I, I, and by the way, I can, I, can, I can also operate, take a nap and get, to have some coffee and do two shows. I don't have a problem with that. I'm all, and I also don't get way fucked up so that I can't do my job. Mm -hmm. But I go, let's go day drink. Let's have a great lunch. We've been dieting. Let's go day drink, have a great lunch, drink some hand grenades, a couple hurricanes, a fucking... And dude, it was it was the greatest... I'm doing it. Yeah. It was the greatest fucking afternoon you could ever have in New Orleans. In New Orleans, fucking Sunday football. You walk into a bar, they got the fucking football game on. And you, you would hate if some, like some real shit were to kind of take away from that experience right yeah like uh yeah like I, don't, I i i i i like living in the fantasy i love i love i love all of it and so i i i, I and then and then what i like to imagine so like all, all day yesterday i was thinking what are cities i would move to leanne leaves me right she kicks me out of the house i'm done with you where are places i could move that and i could be burt because leanne i don't ever have to worry about leanne showing up <laughs> right, right right and so new orleans is one of them leanne hates new orleans mm -hmm. she's like why, why would why would you want to go to new orleans i go it's a fucking blast like it's there's there's things are always around the corner you always run into someone that you went to high school with in new orleans right and you're like shut the fuck up they're like Arr! and uh that, is that one of the places you would move then uh, I, I was my short list of places i would go tell me uh new orleans malibu leanne would never move to malibu why she fucking she I love Malibu. Hates Malibu. It's the shit. She hates Malibu. Just because there's like the only the only sh only shitty thing about Malibu is the kind of one way in, one way out. Yeah. Sort of. I've already fantasized about it. Yeah. I can tell you what you want me to tell you my plan yeah. for Malibu. Yeah. Start dating a yoga teacher. I'm going to buy her a yoga studio in that little part, that little complex mm -hmm. down by Zuma. I'm going to okay. buy her a yoga studio there. And I live in Malibu, and I get horses. I live up in the hills. I get horses. I overlook the ocean. Uh -huh. I've, I've I've actually looked at properties. Yeah. Because I love the fantasy. I love to pretend yeah. and then go and then build it out in my head. In New Orleans, I was I, – New Orleans is where I go to die. Like that's where I go. She kicks me out, whatever. I, something happens and I can't redeem myself. Yeah. Then I go to New Orleans to drink myself to death. To Key, West. Key, Key West. Leanne Key West. hates Key West. You're a, you would be just a fixture in Key West. Dude. Yes. I've already figured it. Maybe you, you know Hemingway's di died, but there's a guy who's a lot like him. I've already I've already pictured what I look like when I live in Key West. I'd never touch this beard; it just keeps growing, right? Yeah. yeah. And my hair, I'm gonna grow it out long and stringy. I'm gonna lose a ton of weight. I'm gonna be like two fifteen. Okay. And like people will be like, "God damn, he's got big arms." And they're like, "Show oh, shit, is that Bert?" 
and everyone was like, "Oh my God, what happened to him?" Oh, Leanne, um, he Leanne kicked him out of the house because he hit her or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great example. That's, that was the only thing yeah, I could yeah, think. Yeah. That's the yeah. only logical <laughs> thing. I was like, I'd never seen on her. <laughs> Well, all, you would hit her. <laughs> I'd hit her a clue. I'd hit her before I seen it on her. I know you're not supposed to laugh. I would hit her before I seen on her. Where do you think you would hit her? Fist or open hand. <laughs> close fist. I've never slapped anybody. I never. I wouldn't start with a slap. <laughs> you just punched her in the face. Oh, oh fuck. Uh. Oh fuck. Oh, oh my god. Oh fuck me. <laughs> I know. Oh, that felt really good. It's so funny that like one of my first was so fucked up, but my thought was like, I'd like to see it. <laughs> like, if you did, I'd be like, do you have it on tape? <laughs> it's on the Nest Cam. <sighs> It'd be a great opening clip for your mom's house. <laughs> Guys, we got a great clip. Oh, oh. oh my God. Uh, you keep playing the audio drop of her scream. Oh <laughs> what have I missed? I swung and I missed. Oh, <laughs> oh we got to uh, be, be done. We're done. Yeah, we're done. We're done. All right. I'm performing at the Greek, everybody. Cinco de Mayo. My wife will be there. Chicago, April oh. 16th. Yeah, yeah, you've added a second, second arena show. Second arena show in Chicago. Oh, fuck me. Do you think Leanne will find that funny? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, fuck. All right. I love you. I love you, too. Bye, guys. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur protology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears One Cave.